Hey, y'all. Welcome back to the Don't Mom Alone podcast. I'm your host, Heather McFadden, and this is the place where I get to walk alongside you and connect you with people and resources so you know that you don't mom alone. And in this episode, it is the last week of our summer of mentorship. We have been having past guests back on to give us an update on their life and talk to us about their unique mom brand. Well, today's guest Christy Wright first came on the show in February of 2018. Go back and listen to that episode. It is a fantastic one about managing your life with guilt-free confidence. She is back on to give us a major update in her rebranding process. And to walk away from everything that I built was absolutely, I mean, I'm going to get teary as I think about it. It was terrifying, but I was certain, certain that that's what I was supposed to do. And God in his goodness just kept affirming. He's I got you. We understand that your values may not change, but your assignments do. And who you are doesn't change, but where God has you using those gifts does. And so Christy is here to kind of share with us her testimony of how she has done that this last year, how she's leaned into following God, uh, pushing past fear and being filled with faith to rebrand her mom story right now. And I'm excited because this is the first time she's really talked publicly about this major move away from being a Dave Ramsey personality for 12 years to being a stay-at-home mom and launching her own new thing. So let's get right to it. Here we go. Hey, Christy, welcome back to the Don't Mom Alone podcast. Hey, Heather. Thanks for having me. I'm so excited about this. Well, you are our final Summer of Mentorship mentor. We've had you on the show years ago, but a lot has happened even most yeah. recently for you. <laughs> yep. And I'm here to break the story. I was, I was asking you, I was like, <laughs> have you talked about this with anyone? And so, yeah, I, I'm just really inspired. And, you know, I have all these questions that we've been asking mentors about their mom brands, but I'm okay going off script if we want to just hash out your story, because I think your mom brand probably will resonate with a lot of women as you've pursued your career and it's taking you all these different places. And now you're pursuing a different route. So let's start, introduce your family real quick. So people can kind of see where you are now with the kids. Yes. Well, thank you for having me. I love getting to connect with you. And we're such kindred spirits in this space of, of encouraging moms. So I have three littles seven, five, and two. They're the ones in that picture right there and two boys and a girl. And then, um, my husband, Matt and I've been married for about 10 years. And so I'm like in the thick of the toddler years. And this is my first summer as what I would consider myself a stay-at-home mom, you know, not having a primary office job, which we'll get into, but, um, yeah, it's just the, the thick of the little kid years, like toddlers and just chaos and crazy and all that. So it's awesome. And also exhausting. (laughs) So we just got back from family camp. And it was our 10th year, but we started when my oldest, we were in that season Yeah, and all these new families were coming in and I'm seeing that I'm like, oh, my heart just aches for that season because it's so good and they're so sweet, but it's a lot and it is exhausting. And I just remember like, I just wanted to hug all of them. Like, yeah, you're doing such a good job, (laughs) but it it feels, the burden feels like a lot and they just all need you so much. And so you have made this, you said new switch to being stay at home. Tell us about this transition, like where yeah. God's led you. If tell people where you were in case they don't know, if they didn't listen yeah. to that episode we did and just this journey you've been on. Yeah. Well, I'll, and, and even just something about you, what you just said, cause I think it relates to that question. I think one of the things that, you know, the moms listening to this podcast have got to remember, and I'm saying this to myself as well. Um, and we can get into to this too, Heather, is I think there's just such a importance of understanding our season that we're in. And I don't think we talk about it enough because one of the things that I'm guilty of doing, and maybe some people listening also do is we find our identity from the season that we're in. And that can be a good thing or bad thing. And so what's so hard, I think in the season of little kids, which I am speaking to the mamas of littles right now is it is so consuming that 
I feel like you lose yourself almost in a different way, maybe even more intense way than you do with a newborn because newborns at least sleep. Like these crazies are up from 5 a.m. to 9 p.m. Like what are, they're always here. <laughs> they're, yes, just always yes, here. they're always here. And, mm-hmm. and then, you know, depending on the road that you walk can really affect not just your season, but also your sense of identity. So for me, we've gone through a really difficult honestly, three years, but definitely six months with my middle son, Conley, walking through some some challenges that he has. And because I'm very private about those challenges, I don't have that community around me. And so I feel like I'm carrying the weight of the world on my shoulders because personally for me, I want to keep all the details of that private. But at the same time, my days are so hard with him and with my other two kids. And so for any mom, that has little kids or has one or more children that have any type of challenge, physical, mental, emotional, developmental, it doesn't matter. Your days are just so consuming. And I just want to say, I see you and I'm with you. And I think it's really important for us to figure out what we need in those seasons to get through it. And to remember it is just a season. It won't be like that forever. And so you know, I think for me, what makes me feel this so much more intensely is I'm home pretty much 24 seven now where I worked full time for a company. Most of you probably remember Ramsey solutions for 12 years. And so I had an office job that I went to every week and I had a very flexible schedule. So I was always able to be at my kids stuff and pretty much set my, set my hours, but I still got to go to work. I got to feel like a grown up. I got a break from the crazy that happens in these four walls and I had help. And that's really important. I had help. And so the short version of the story, I'll give you a flyover and then you can ask whatever questions you you want to. Um, But in November, in the very end of one of the greatest years of my life from a career standpoint, launched probably my favorite book I've ever written. Take Back Your Time was one of my favorite books I've ever written. And it was, I don't know, my, my second real book. It's like fourth if you count devotionals and planners and stuff, but just a great launch, a great book. It's a book I've wanted to, to write for a long time, almost a decade had awesome speaking events that year. I feel like I really hit another gear in terms of my speaking where I was such a veteran in that industry. I I could walk on a stage and I had such confidence that I knew what I was there to do, what I was gifted to do, how to write a talk, how to make impact. So I just, I say all that setup to say (laughs) when in the middle of November out of thin air, I felt God call me to leave Ramsey solutions. I just need the listeners to feel the blow of what that felt like to me at the time, because no, there was no drama behind the scenes. No, I did not see this coming. No, it hadn't been bad for a long time. And we just finally couldn't get along. No, it was the greatest year from a career standpoint I've ever had from an opportunity standpoint, books, speaking, everything. And in the middle of that, or or, or right at the the peak of that, God's like, and we're done here. And I was like, I'm I'm sorry, what? (laughs) And Heather, I know I sound crazy, but the affirmations for anyone that's a believer that God leads you in different ways, whatever way he leads you, whether it's you have words that enter your mind or through scripture or through people, God leads in so many different ways. Just imagine that God began to lead you in a direction and the affirmations were so constant that you couldn't ignore them. That's what it was like, because I guarantee you, I would never leave if if I was not a hundred percent sure that God was calling me. And I was hundred percent sure that God was calling me. And I quickly got to the place where I feared disobedience more than I feared leaving. And I feared leaving a whole lot. I've got three little kids. Heather, this was like my security. It was by the way, what I had essentially agreed to stay on for life for. That's the vision of the Ramsey personalities. We're the succession plan. And I was one of the longest Ramsey personalities I'd started when I was in my mid twenties. And so, and to walk away from everything that I built was absolutely, I mean, I'm going to get teary as I think about it. It was terrifying, Yeah. but I was certain, certain that that's what I was supposed to do. And God in his goodness just kept affirming his, I got you. I got you. You're doing the right thing. I got you. Like he didn't give me one call and then hoped I just carried it through. He was so gracious to hold my hand because he knew how scary that would be for me and how hard it would be for me. And so he affirmed me every step of the way and has been since there's not been a moment of silence. There's not been a moment of doubt. There's not been a moment of regret, even in the scary dips where you're like, what am I doing? He has carried me. And so 
yeah, my days are very different and I've got a new vision. I feel like I'm coming out of the fog. I recently shared on Instagram coming out of the fog and I've got a new vision for what he has for me. Just a little bit of it. I don't think I have the full picture, but I've got a little bit of it and I'm starting to work on some of that stuff, which I'm really excited about. But you talk about a crazy last eight to nine to 10 months. It was scary, but God is also so faithful to carry you through. And again, that brings us back to the seasons, carry you through those seasons of change, seasons of fear, seasons of, you know, whatever that looks like for you. It's super inspiring because we've been talking about mom brand and a part of branding, as you know, as a marketing person is Mm rebranding. And that's terrifying. I remember when we rebranded this show, I was like, what if all the success, all my life is the old thing. And this new thing, it's just going to be a disaster. And so you're in this in between of like, I know this works, right? but I know God and he sees the whole and he's prompting me here. And for some moms, it could be the opposite of what you're talking about. It could be, they've been stay-at-home moms and they're feeling the prompting to go back into the workforce or whatever that is, or go part-time or full-time or whatever. And that feels major. I remember a friend. It feels terrifying. Oh yeah. She like her whole identity was being a homeschool mom uh-huh, and uh-huh. staying home. And then God prompted her to go back into the workforce for a variety of reasons. Sometimes we don't have a choice. Sometimes it's right. forced right. upon us, this rebranding. Right. But I think it's inspiring that you put your faith. I see your little sign over your fear right. yeah, yeah. that that fear is a lot of our fear that is man focused and not yeah. God focused. It's not a fear, but then I think it was your fear of God, <laughs> like yeah. the healthy fear yeah. of God that said, okay, I trust you. And even though this is terrifying, I'm going to follow. Our next partner has a product that I try to use as often as I can because a few years ago, I was diagnosed with leaky gut and found out that traditional multivitamins were not being absorbed by my body and that I was actually deficient in several different vitamins. And so with AG1, I am getting the nutrition I need and it is being absorbed by my gut and actually helping make my gut healthier. So what is this stuff? So with one scoop of AG1, I get 75 high quality vitamins, minerals, and whole foods, superfoods, probiotics, and adaptogens being absorbed in my body to start my day. So what I think is interesting is that you would think it would taste very green. It it is green and the name is green, but it has this mild tropical fruity taste to it that when I had Bruce try it, he was even surprised. He was like, oh, that tastes that tastes better than I thought, which is what other people have said who've reviewed it. It also contains less than a gram of sugar. So there's no nasty chemicals, artificial anything, no GMOs. So it tastes good and it's good for you. What I also love is that when you get a subscription, it comes with a year's supply of vitamin D, liquid vitamin D, which again is what was prescribed to me. It helps my body absorb this really important vitamin that I was lacking. And it costs you less than $3 a day. So if you want to invest in your health, it is cheaper than your cold brew habit. Not not calling anyone out. Uh, Also, really important, for every purchase, they donate to organizations helping get nutritious food to kids in need, including No Kid Hungry in the U.S. And if we we don't uh, want other moms to mom alone, this is a great way to support moms who want to get nutritious food to their children. So right now, it's time to reclaim your health, arm your immune system with convenient daily nutrition. It's just one scoop in a cup of water every day. That's it. No need for a million different pills and supplements to take care of your health. To make it easy, Athletic Greens is going to give you a free one-year supply of immune-supporting vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. So you can take it with you if you're going anywhere to end the summer. All you have to do is visit athleticgreens.com slash DMA. Again, that's athleticgreens.com forward slash DMA to take ownership over your health and pick up the ultimate daily nutritional insurance. And I think one of the things that's so hard, it made me think of it when you just said this is like, if I say to you, or if I say to your listeners, you are not what you do, yeah. we all go, yeah, yeah, I know. Totally <laughs> got that. Yeah, I got it. And you're like, okay, well stop doing what you're doing. You're like, no, who am I? I don't know. It's like, we start to like sweat and panic. 
we understand intellectually we are not what we do. Our identity is so much greater than that and, and has such a stronger foundation than that. But when you take away what we do, it really is where the rubber meets the road and goes like, are you okay with you when you take away what you do? And to your point, whether that is working and you walk away from it, a business you have to shut down, a business you have to rebrand, being a homeschool mom and your kids are empty nest, you're an empty nester now, being a stay-at-home mom and God's calling you to work or do something different. Are you still okay with you when you're not doing the thing you used to do? And that's a real test of where our identity lies. And I think it can be a very awesome opportunity to build our faith, but not just build our faith and trust in God. That's a, that's a given. That's a part of the process because it's terrifying when we change or rebrand or transition or whatever. It also is this awesome opportunity to get more secure in our identity, to get more rooted. Like Heather, I went from like massive stages and spotlights to like, I don't know the last time I washed my hair. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, it's like, that's the a best real part of summer. whiplash. Right? That's the like best part of summer. Yes. You're living it it's all. It's a whiplash. Yeah, yeah. Where you're going like, am I still okay with me? Yeah. When I don't have all these things that I used to do that, that I never thought my identity was in them, but it still was a part of my days, my rhythms, my life and something I enjoyed. And it wasn't bad. It was something God gifted me to do at that time. And, and, you know, I love how you are talking about rebranding. And I think that one of the things that we know about God, you can use the term rebranding or, or a different term, but God will tell you who you are and God will change your plans and, and who you are doesn't change. And he's like, no, now you're doing this. Now I decide who you are. I decide what you do. I decide the timing and the look and the feel of the rebrand, where you go and what you do. And as terrifying and unsettling as that process is, especially for us type A planners, control <laughs> freaks. It's also a really beautiful time of intimacy with the Lord where you go, all right, okay, you figure it out. All these questions people are asking me, well, Christy, what about this? What about this? I'm like, I don't know. He's going to figure it out. This yeah. was his idea. So he's got that part figured out. And it was so now, if this was my idea, I'd be terrified. Right. If I didn't obey, I'd be terrified. Yeah. But because it was his idea and I obeyed, I'm like, all right, God, you're going to figure it out. Well, and a lot of what you're talking about is later questions that I we could get into, but like the whole assignments idea that mm -hmm. we have the same calling to go and make disciples and we have different places where we're assigned to do that. And you're being reassigned. It hasn't changed your giftedness. Right. It hasn't, your gift right. hasn't changed who you are, hasn't changed, but he's reassigning you. And I'm curious, let's to jump back to one of the questions we often ask about mom brand is as you're going through this process, I'm guessing your values rose to the surface. like part of this was recognizing, okay, God, I'm following you. I'm terrified, but I really value X, Y, and Z. One of your values obviously is your faith. And so following God, were there other values that rose to the cervix as a mom or a woman when you went through that? Yeah. So it's interesting because I think I'm defining that, you know, in a more explicit way, like, okay, I get to set my days way more than I ever have before. So I get to decide how I spend my time like a hundred percent. There's no one else that gets a say in my time, but me now. And that's a, that's a new, that's a new <laughs> thing. I've worked since I was 15. Like, like that's a new thing to like completely own my time. You literally, I see your book title, take back your time. You literally, you literally did all it. of your time back. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Two months afterwards, I was like, and God's and like, here we go. We're going to live okay. this out. Yeah. Yeah. Here's what I would say, and this is just coming to my mind so strongly. So I'm just going to believe that it's for your listeners right now, because it has been for me. And I, I don't want anyone to hear something I'm not saying. So I want to be very cautious of my words. So be patient with me as I, as I say this, a value that I believe is a value of the Lord. I believe this is one of God's values. And you see it in scripture again and again and again and again. It's a value he has for us that he will go to great lengths to bring to life in our life is freedom. He wants his children to be free. Now, I don't want someone to hear something I'm not saying, but when I made that decision on the other side of the fear and the transition and months of tears and talking to people and walking this out, I've never felt more free than I did at that time. Now I can't explain to you what that means free to do what I don't know. I had a wonderful relationships at that company. And for some people, it is absolutely right to work at a company for the rest of your life. That is absolutely right for them, but you could, you, anything could be a source of, of bondage and you don't realize it. it could be food. 
It could be a relationship. You could be in bondage to approval from other moms at your kid's private school, and you are wearing yourself out to please them and have the right brands. I'm, I'm making it, but it could be anything. And I just think that God will go to great lengths to break those chains, whatever that is for you. And so I, for me, I just feel like the freedom that I feel, especially in this season to full time focus on, especially my kids, but especially my middle son, who we have had a really hard eight months. God's like, I'm going to free you up here from a schedule standpoint and from an emotional capacity standpoint, Heather, there's no way in the world I could have gone through what I went through the last five months with my middle son and shown up in an office and got on camera and taught or performed or contributed to meetings or contributed to the team. God knew what was around the corner for me. And he was like, and for multiple purposes, I believe he plucked me right out of there. And he was like, we're going to go home and focus on what's happening at home. So the thing that just keeps coming to mind for me is just God wants you to be free. You know, there's such a huge emphasis in the Bible in the old Testament on the Exodus out of Egypt. And when God's talking to his people for centuries after that, he's like, I am the God that rescued you from Egypt. I am the God that rescued you from bondage. And so I think a lot of times we, you know, we'll think of it just as this extreme example of like, you know, a really toxic relationship or a really bad job. It doesn't have to be that God can free you from anything that's not right for you anymore. And I think he wants his children to be free. And so I, if there's any word of like, Christy, how do you feel since leaving? the word that I just can't get over is I just feel so free. I can do whatever I want. I can spend my days however I want to. And and like I said, that's not right for everybody. Most people working in a company is wonderful, but um, I think you just need to go to the Lord and ask him, is there anything I need to be freed from? And he'll show you and he'll help you. It's a really good word. Because like you said, it's so personal between whoever's listening and God. Mm -hmm. And it really goes back to like what you said free from slavery in Egypt. But then God's like, why do you keep going back to these created idols? That's right. Like that's right. And he keeps like setting them free from their cycles of idolatry. And I think that's what we go to too. Like, yes, there was security and you being part of Ramsey solution. There's like 100%. a, like a, like a safety net right there. 100%. Ready. And 100%. him saying, you know what? I'm going to take this one. So you got me as your safety net and right. we're going to, we're going right. to free fall together. I think is, um, is really just a good word for each person to evaluate for themselves. When you're talking about rebranding, but I think a lot of times we, as humans, we want to categorize things and label things and judge things. But like, well, if something is not right now, then it's just bad and was always bad. No, no, no. Something could have been so good for that season. That's where I bring it back to seasons. That was right for 12 years. It would have been wrong for me to stay beyond God's call out of there for the season that I'm in now. What is right right now is for me to be home with my son and, and so on doing this new thing. But I think that we don't have to demonize what was yep. for it to not be right right now. It can be not right right now. And it was perfect back then. And it was right right then. And so I think that for someone to say, God, to go to the Lord and say, Lord, is there anything you want to free me from? Is there anything I'm holding on to that was right a year ago, 10 years ago, 10 weeks ago, and I'm still holding on to it because it was right then. So I think it's going to forever be right. And you're going, we're done with that now. And he wants to free you from that thing. Again, that thing doesn't have to be bad to be freed from, but we do need to free ourselves from it if it's not right anymore. It's good. I haven't really announced yet, but my next book comes out in April. Oh, congratulations. Called, right where you belong. Yeah. And it's about it. following God into those spaces that's that right. he's assigning you. And so I love that. I'm like, yes, Christy, keep going. Yeah. <laughs> Even when I saw your news, I was like, she's doing it. She is yeah. doing exactly that. So I'm looking at our questions here as part of your brand. How have you seen with this transition, your family flourish? Well, my kids love me being home more. Yeah. And it's interesting because I'm just going to, I'm just going to tell you the truth, Heather on how I feel about motherhood and being home. And I'm going to make some people mad and I'm okay, okay. with that. Listen, we're all That's different okay. people. Just settle just yourself down. You. We've told so, all kinds of stories this, okay, this summer. So yeah. go for it. So I think it's so interesting. One of my favorite verses is Psalm 37, four, delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. So when I left Ramsey as an example, it was not my desire to leave. And since leaving, God has turned my desire where I'm so grateful to be in this new season where I don't, I don't work for a company anymore, any company, not even wonderful companies, but he, he's, he will change your desires or he will fulfill the desires that you've had all along. So this is going to sound weird. I, I don't love babies. 
Okay. I just don't, I don't love the baby stage. I don't love being pregnant. I was the size of the Titanic. My back (laughs) is bad. Like I, I did not. And I know some people would love to be pregnant. I know. And I was grateful to get to create a body, a a baby in my body. But if I'm just going to be honest, it was a very hard road for me. And I did not enjoy, though I was grateful. I also was very, did not enjoy it. You can be both. (laughs) Um, And so I didn't enjoy pregnancy. I didn't enjoy the baby stage. And to be honest, I think because I'm so active, I didn't love the baby stage because you can't really do anything with them. They just eat and sleep and poop and you change their diet. Like I I didn't feel like we were bonding. I was just, uh, you know, but it's interesting because I thought all along, once I got into this motherhood, after having a couple, I was like, okay, I don't love the baby stage, but man, I feel like once I can do stuff with them, I'm going to like thrive because I'm so active. And what's so cool is I worked in a company. I did the work I was supposed to do for that company for those years and make the impact with that team. And then right at the moment, not only that my son needs me, so that's an additional reason, but right at the time that my daughter is old enough to start like doing stuff, God calls me home. And I'm just having a blast with them because I can do stuff with them. Now, Heather, if God called me home with three babies, you might have to commit me. (laughs) I don't think that's where I'm going to thrive. I don't think they're (laughs) thriving. I'm not thriving. Nobody's thriving. Nobody's thriving. But because he called me home right at the season, where they're old enough to do stuff, where we go on creek hikes. Like I would, when I was little, we go to the zoo, we go do stuff all the time. I I feel like they are thriving and I am too. I'm thriving in motherhood because it's right at that timing of when I get to enjoy bonding with them in the way that, you know, just being active and so on. And so, yeah, I I feel like that just the, and I'm a summer person, I'm a summer birthday, my birthday's tomorrow. So it's like, I'm I'm just like the summer season is when I'm just, cause I'm always outside. So talk to me in December. Maybe I won't be thriving. I don't know. <laughs> but right now their age plus the season. Yeah. I feel like we are all thriving just because we get this time together to just be active together. And that's how we bond. So great. And I, I do, I have vi- I have very fond memories of that season. And because you have your three, how old your oldest? Seven. Seven. So I feel like the next four years is such a gift. Yeah, because they are in that and you can travel and you can, and they they don't have phones and yeah, it's like, they still like us. They're all yours. Like, and they, anyway, they all like each other a little bit sometimes. Um, So it is so sweet and such a gift that you're able to do that. That's such a gift. Whatever your rebrand looks like right now, whether you are moving into a new role or moving out of a new role, you may need help filling a position. And I want to connect you with a great way to do that. Indeed is the hiring platform where you can attract, interview, and hire all in one place. Instead of spending hours on multiple job sites searching for candidates with the right skills, Indeed is a powerful hiring partner that can help you do it all. So you're going to find your talent faster through time-saving tools like Indeed's Instant Match assessments and virtual interviews. Let me explain Instant Match. So basically, over 80% of employers get the quality candidates they need whose resume on Indeed matches their job description the moment they sponsor a job. So You have your job, you sponsor it, and you are going to be matched instantly with any candidates whose resume has something that matches your job description. So I think that's really, really cool. In fact, in the minute I've been talking to you, 16 hires were made on Indeed, according to their Indeed data worldwide. And Indeed's doing something no other job site has done. Now with Indeed, businesses only pay for quality applications matching the sponsored job description. So visit indeed.com slash DMA to start hiring now. Just go to indeed.com slash DMA. Indeed.com slash DMA. Terms and conditions apply. Need to hire? You need Indeed. No matter what career path you are on, one thing I think moms share is we want to do our best. And sometimes part of our brand is we want really healthy food and we want to save money providing that for our families. And maybe we even have a child who has a unique need when it comes to what they eat. And so I want to connect you with a great option if that describes you. It's Thrive Market. It's one place where you can buy organic groceries and non-toxic cleaning and beauty products 
all in one place and have it delivered right to your door. So if you're trying to save money, it saves money on your gas and your time because you're not having to make that trip to the store. You can also search by a certain diet, whether it's plant-based or keto or gluten-free. They have all these pre-made lists. I also saw recently they've created these little packs of things. And so I just bought the chips and salsa snack bundle because I'm a big fan. I am a Texan, but it let you pick from four different Thrive Market salsas. Um, I chose the smoky chipotle and a medium salsa and then bags of chips. So non-GMO yellow and white corn tortilla chips and blue corn tortilla chips. Uh, I get four different things and I'm saving 50%. And if I auto ship to that, like if I'm like every month I need my chips and salsa, I would save an extra 5%. So you can see how all of this builds, especially if you're a family that's buying products every month, the same products. So when you buy from Thrive Market, you can save up to 30% off the best organic groceries. Join Thrive Market today and get $80 in free groceries. That's T-H-R-I-V-E market.com slash DMA to get $80 in free groceries. That's thrivemarket.com slash DMA, thrivemarket.com slash DMA. And best of all, if you happen to find a lower price elsewhere, Thrive Market will match it. You mentioned creek walks. What other things do y'all do during the summer? Okay. So we have a lake house in Alabama. So we go down there and we've been tubing and I'm trying to get the kids to water ski. They haven't done that yet, but tubing and fishing and just going on the boat, swimming, they love to swim. And we've got some friends across the river that will go over over to the boat over to their house and go off the diving board and stuff. So that's, we've done lots of camps and then both of my boys love to swim. And so of course, just going to the pool, anything with water or outdoors in nature. So those are the two main things, like just anything active riding bikes and scooters. Like we just, it's pretty simple, fun. We don't have some big fancy thing. We just love to be outside and be active. And you can. Yeah. Because you aren't here. That's right. Yeah. Giddy up for this week when you come to Dallas. Giddy up. That's (laughs) right. Yeah. Bring your your neck fan. Um, Mm -hmm. Okay. So I was just, something came to mind that I wanted to ask you about that happens in mom community when it's related to corporate work and stay at home mom. Yeah. How has it been navigating those relationships, relationships that possibly I'm just, I'm not, I'm making an assumption. It might not be true that maybe you were outside of or felt outside of when you were working at Ramsey solutions for 12 years. And now you're like entering in, have you felt any kind of, sometimes I think it's perceived and sometimes it's real. Yeah, no, totally. Well, it's interesting because I've, this is a subject that has fascinated me even before I had kids. I wrote a blog on this on like, the, the mommy wars and the women, the judging, you know, for all of our different personal decisions we have to make. So I, this is something that's always fascinated me. What's interesting is I think we're all guilty and men are guilty of this too. We're all guilty of saying, well, I would never, (laughs) I would never let my child act like that in target. I would never, but the truth is we've never walked in those shoes. So it's real easy to judge someone and say, I would never do X, I, Z, or I would do it this way when you've never actually had to do that thing. And so one of the things that I think is, um, I don't know. So eye opening, I guess, is just when you walk in those shoes, it's a very different story when you walk in those shoes. So the thing that has been the most eye opening for me is we, I mean, this is also personal, but it's not a secret. We kept our nanny on. We had a full-time nanny, three kids. I traveled all the time. So we had a full-time nanny for five years. And then I left in November, December time. We kept her on through March, just while I was figuring it out. I was like, you don't need to change everything overnight. But about February, we realized I'm going to be home and we're, we can't afford to just have a nanny just, you know, here without me, you know, working. And so she found another job. We walked with her. It was like two months of like praying and finding the perfect. She found like the greatest job. It's, we're so happy for her. And she's still here like one day a week. But what has been the most eye opening is not having help. So, oh, can I share a book I'm reading right now? Please. Okay. <laughs> Please, please (laughs) listen. I know you got a lot of Christians and sometimes I just like to ruffle Christians feathers. I'm a Christian. I love Jesus too. The book is called how to stop losing your with your kids. Okay. And it, it, it bleeps out the word, but that's the word Heather. It is so good. Now, the reason I bring it up is this reason, because one of the things this book talks about is how we get triggered. Okay. Mm -hmm. And we lose our cool 
Yep. I'll give you the Christian word. We lose our cool with our kids when we are triggered. And so we can't always control our kids being crazy, you know, to, to a degree, but we can control our triggers and how big they are and how big our buttons are and so on. And so one of the things I've identified in myself is I'm an Enneagram eight, anybody that's into the Enneagram. Okay. That's one of my worst. To me. Oh. I'm surprised. <laughs> that, that is a compliment. Cause most people are like, yeah, I'd rather that's what I mean. No, I would have um, thought three. I mean, based okay. on the out external, yeah. I would have thought three, eight. Sure. That's very interesting. Okay. Yeah. So one of my worst fears is an eight, and this goes way back to my childhood wounds, which we don't have to get into, but is being helpless. Yeah. Being trapped, like worst fear. I'll do, if you're like, Christy, you'll do this or else. I'm like, so it's or else because no one's going to make me jump. And I feel trapped Mm -hmm. at home because I don't have childcare. And so like my birthday's tomorrow and you know what I'm going to be doing? I'm going to be watching my kids. Yep. Because one babysitter that is an option for us is out of town and Becca works her real full-time job now somewhere else. So it's like, I would love to go get a pedicure. So there's, there's this feeling of like being trapped. And so it just, it creates so much more empathy, I think for stay-at-home moms or people that live in cities that don't have parents that, that feeling of helplessness, because you don't have a lot of options or you don't have any options in some cases. And so um, that has been very eye-opening, a whole new level of compassion. I think I understood intellectually before, and now I feel it in my bones, in my exhaustion, in my dark circles under my eyes level of feel it. That's been the most probably eye-opening to adapt. The other thing is learning how to shake off just those comments of like, I would never people that have never walked in my shoes. You know what I mean? That has been, I'm an Enneagram eight. So that's one of the good things about eights. I'm like, I don't care what you think. I don't really care what you believe it or not. We do care still a little bit. And so, especially when you're vulnerable or sensitive, it can hurt your feelings. And so I was on a conference call. This was um, months ago, but it was a woman in the business world and she knew me from the business world. And she goes, so what are you doing now? (laughs) Like I was just having mimosas all day with my feet up. (laughs) I was like, Bon, keeping bon. my children alive. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And apparently that's a full-time job because I don't even eat. Like I don't even sit down. Yeah. And so the perception people have of you, like you're not doing anything. Yeah. Um, another one um, with my son, my middle son that has some challenges um, out in public, you know, it's like these looks of like, mm, you obviously don't have any discipline in your household. I'm like, you don't understand what we're dealing with here. Yep. And, and just, so just being able to guard against either looks or comments and know that I'm doing what's right by my family. I am doing what's right in this season. And I don't owe anybody an explanation for that. And and it's easy for them to say, I would never do this, or I would do it this way. And I'm like, you've never walked in these shoes. So you, you don't, don't know the whole say. story. <laughs> yeah, Nobody yeah, does. Yeah, Nobody yeah. knows the whole story. And I'm guessing because it's been since spring, like some moms have these communities where it's like, I'll watch your kids. You watch my kids. Uh-huh. Like that dynamic is just now getting worked out for you. Yeah. And it's, yeah, it's interesting because, um, yeah, I don't, I don't feel like I have that yet for, yeah. for, for sure. Like during the school year, we all have such a schedule where it's like, we'll all tag team on carpools. Yep. Um, and that is such a gift. But yeah, in the summer, it's like, I feel like it's just a wild, wild West in the summer. <laughs> like, it's just literally like <laughs> Everybody is everywhere yeah. and you don't know where anybody is mm-hmm. anytime. And it's just, it just feels like it's chaos. And so yeah. I'm ready. I feel, I was telling my husband the other day, I feel a little bit at this stage of summer. And again, this is my first summer as a stay at home mom where I'm like, what day is it? <laughs> but I feel like how we all felt maybe eight weeks into COVID we're like, okay, that fun summer, no schedule thing is <laughs> worn off. And now yeah. I'm like, I need, I need a structure to my life. Yeah. And so I'm, I'm ready for some structure back. Yeah. Yeah. I was wondering like some moms we've interviewed this summer, it's like, they have like very, because for some moms that at home school, it's the same. They're with their kids all the time, all the day, right. all right. so, so the summer's yeah. not that much different. Right. But I was just, I was curious if I know for mine, like we try to like no screens in the morning, do some of your summer reading or work yeah. and then move into screens in the afternoon. Do you have like a structure? that you've yeah. come up with for the ages that yours are. Do you still have nap time even? Like we have nap time for Mary Grace, okay. um, for my, for my little one. Um, yeah. One of the things that we're instituting. So we're learning about how my middle son Conley learns and what discipline works for him. Yep. But because I don't want to treat him differently in our house, we're trying to gradually roll out discipline programs or what, whatever, just more structure around yeah. that more predictable structure around that that works for all, all three kids. And so there are certain things that we're doing, but it's kind of like this sounds silly, but it's this token system. It's what this behavioral 
psychologist has been helping us with, but it's this token system where it's like, if you do X, Y, Z, you get a token and then you can use tokens for iPad time or, you yeah. know, for, for a special treat or something like that. And that's been really effective. Um, super hard to continue when you're on the road, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, oh, now we're at Mamie and Pops all week for vacation Bible school. So again, summer's just hard to maintain, yeah. but that has been helpful because the things that are hard for one of my kids it gives them a reward system. So if I brush my teeth on my own, I get a token, but then my other two kids, like for Carter, who that's easy for, he's just excited because he's just getting tokens. So he's just racking up the tokens, but I don't care because it just creates a consistent program that everyone gets rewarded for doing these things independently because, yeah. oh my gosh, I don't want to be brushing your teeth when you're 17. All of you, please do something <laughs> on your, you know what I mean? So, um, yes. Yes. so, so that has helped because it all goes back to, they are in control of, the outcome. So if you want iPad time, then you, you know, do you have the tokens for it type of thing? And we're not perfect by any means, but it is oh, a structure sister. that has helped us, you know, you want to talk about seasons. Yeah. I've yeah. tried all the parenting things and yeah, for like one summer, we would do that. We would do like a ticket system and it yeah. worked and it was great for yeah. us. And then yeah. maybe something else. Another, I mean, figuring out what works for your people and where you are is a gift and I, you know, everyone says be consistent. I'm like, I'm being consistent right this second, but I don't know about like year (laughs) over year. Okay. I don't, I can't, I can't. Well, our generation of moms just have so much pressure because you, aside from social media and Pinterest, which we all know, but even just information onslaught of here's the right way to parent. Like I follow several parenting accounts that are so good on Instagram, but every time I read them, I'm like, well, I'm doing everything wrong. (laughs) They're like, don't say this, say this. I'm like, dang it. Don't say this, say this. I'm like, shoot. Don't. (laughs) Everything they say, don't say, I, I say, and I, don't, I feel like I'm a very intelligent, empathetic mom. And I still feel like, so it can create this narrative in your mind that like, it's an impossible bar or you're always failing. So back to that book, how to not lose your cool with your kids is, um, don't <laughs> look at that. Not the one. It's not, if you, if you search that, that's not the name. That's not the name. Starts with an S. We'll, we'll link, um, we'll link to it. We'll find it. Um, we'll find it. But she talks in this book about how she goes, you're not a bad mom. Yeah you're not a bad mom. You believe that you are because your child is acting up. You're having a hard time and you've got a lot of information making you feel like you are. Let me tell you what's really going on. And she peels away the layers of what's really going on in the difficulties of our homes. And it is like brain science and it's brilliant. And it's so like, I feel myself list. I'm listening to the audio, but I feel my shoulders go, yeah, thank goodness. Thank goodness. It's not that I'm failing. You know what I mean? And so there's such a, it's almost just like a, such a compassion to it. It's not like stop losing your cool because you're a jerk and you should stop being a jerk. It's like, stop losing your cool. Hey, this is a really hard road. And here's some things making it harder for you that you can probably improve to make it easier on you and your kids. And so I just think what moms need right now is not more information, not more instruction, not more manuals, not more accounts. We just need more compassion because I think compassion is a thing that will help us enjoy any season, enjoy our kids and also just be better. Yeah. When I, when I receive compassion, I'm better. Not when people point a finger at me and judge me. And so we're all like that, you know? Yep. It's the gift of motherhood is that it brings all that junk to the surface that mm-hmm. Jesus is so compassionate to heal yes. in us. Like you were saying, yes. those triggers, if it wasn't your kids, it might be a coworker yeah. who's making you feel helpless. For me, the rejection trigger, if my child's not happy, I feel like I messed up or, you know, yeah. so it's digging into those. Yeah. So where you and God are like solid and, uh, right. and the, and your kids are that gift. Isn't that That's so right. sweet? They bring all That's your right. junk to the surface. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah. I'm happy to do that for you. <laughs> <laughs> for you. Well, I'm honored to get to share your story today and help people know where to stay in contact with you because you have your new site up. You have a way for them to sign up. So yes. Well, thank you. Thank you so much. Well, we've got, so I feel like I'm coming out of the fog and so I've got a couple of things I'm launching in the next couple of months. Um, so if anybody wants to know about what that's, what's happening there, it's Christy dash, right.com. Don't forget the dash. If you do Christy, right.com, it'll go back to Ramsey solution site, but Christy dash, right.com. And then at the top, like a straight line, like a horizontal line. Yeah, that's it. Dash. Mm -hmm. If you go there and sign up for my email list, I'm doing some kind of like (laughs) secret launches to my text campaign and my email list first. So I'll do some fun stuff just exclusive for them. So you can sign up there. So you're the first to know when, when those come out, it's probably going to come out realistically, keep it real August or September. Once my kids are in school Mm -hmm. and I can actually do these things. (laughs) Yeah, You just enjoy those people. You just enjoy those people. Well, 
We are thrilled to connect with you. I'm thrilled to connect with you and see your cute face and hear about what you're doing. So thank you so much. Thanks for having me, Heather. Thanks for having me. I so appreciate it. So we've put links to Christy's website in the show notes and her book that she mentioned. The books that she mentioned are in the show notes. Um, But I just want to pray over us because I don't know if that sparked something in you. Uh, Again, like we said in the episode, we're not saying, oh, wow, she's made the right choice. She made the God choice. And for some of us, the God choice is a rebrand in the other direction. So I'm just going to pray for us that we would be open to God's lead and whatever that is for the upcoming season of your life and to trust him, even if it doesn't make logical sense um, that you are being led by God. Lord, I thank you for Christy. I thank you for her testimony of faith. And even though it's not easy and even though it doesn't make sense to maybe a watching world, that it doesn't matter because she is trusting your lead over um, man's logic. I pray for the moms who are listening and the dads that you would open their hearts to hear from you, that they would lean in and ask you, where are you prompting them to go next? What are you prompting them to let go of? What do they need to be freed from that they're trusting in more than you, God? And I pray that even if that may be true with our kids, that there's something we're holding on to because we think we think compared to everyone else, that's what we're supposed to do. But but your nudges, your Holy Spirit prompts are telling us otherwise. I pray, Lord, as we head into this next school year, that whatever direction you're pointing our families, our kids, our own lives, that we would be open to you, your leading and not... Um, try to pull the reins or create our own kingdoms. I pray that we would be surrendered to you. And um, I pray for Christy as she launches this new aspect of her life that we could pray for and support her in that. And Jesus name, amen. Okay, guys, thanks for joining me. The next couple of weeks, I'm going to be doing some solo episodes and then we're going to launch into the fall, which is crazy. I'm not ready. I'm not ready. I'm really enjoying these lazy days, these waking up late days because I have older kids who stay up later than me and sleep in super late. But I am excited to stay connected with you and lots of new things. Like I said in this episode, um, I think there's even an Amazon link already up where you can pre-order the next book. Uh, It's called Right Where You Belong. So you can go check that out. That's going to be my next focus is telling you all more about that book and some exciting things coming on in the future. But I will see you back here next week. Adios. I hope you enjoyed this episode of the Don't Mom Alone podcast. If you're wanting to connect with more people and more resources to help remind you that you're not alone, head over to don'tmomalone.com. That's where you'll also find show notes with any links mentioned by our guests. Most importantly, I want you to know the good news, the great news that you're not alone because God has promised to always be with you. With faith in Jesus Christ, the one who died for you and rose again, Jesus said when he left, he was going to leave a helper, a comforter to be with us. God in us. Moms, that's superpower. So while you're washing dishes at your kitchen sink, while you're driving to and from work, while you're feeding that baby late into the night, while you're cleaning sticky floors, God promises to be just as present with you as when you're worshiping in a church pew. As it says in Zephaniah 317, the Lord your God is with you. He is mighty to save. He takes great delight in you. He will quiet you with his love and he will rejoice over you with singing. Now that's good news. Have a great day.